أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي Allah Azza wa Jalla at the end of Surah Al-Furqan, Surah number 25, has a passage describing those who are the slaves of Ar-Rahman. Allah has many names and He can attribute, call people slaves of Allah, slaves of the Creator, slaves of the wise. But when He calls them slaves of Ar-Rahman, it is as though He is suggesting that these people have a relationship with Him based on His endless and unimaginable love and mercy and care. So the slaves of the one who cares a lot, the slaves of the one who loves a lot, the slaves of the one who shows mercy unimaginably. So. That means that these are special people. That the people Allah is describing at the end of this passage are very, very special people. All believers are special, but these are extra, super duper, awesome, special. Now, the first quality that is described of these people that earn the title Ibadur Rahman is Alladina Yamshuna al Ardi Hounan. That they walk on the earth, those who walk on the earth, with humility, Hounan, softly, acknowledging their weakness. You know, when we accomplish things, we feel a sense of kind of strength and power and empowerment. And those are the moments in life where we're supposed to acknowledge our humility. This is number one. And Haunan also suggests that you are, you don't demonstrate your strength in front of others. Allah talks about this on many occasions in the Quran. For example, lowering your wings before your parents. What does that mean? That means you're an adult, you're, you have a career, you have money, you have your own car, you have a house and your parents are retired, they're old. So obviously you're in a position of strength and they're in a position of weakness, but you need to not flap your wings too much, you need to chill out and act humbly in front of them. So the act of humility. You know, one time I met, um, uh, recently I traveled, and uh, there was a brother who picked us up from the airport, drove us around everywhere, and kind of just took care of everything. This guy was literally like a servant, driving us around all over the place, right? To, for food, for lectures, for this, for that, anything else I can do, can I get you some water, can I do this, can I do that? Like super humble brother. At the end of the trip, we find out the guy's worth like $700 million. It was really, I, I couldn't fathom, like, how does this work? How, where do you get this kind of humility? I know people that make like $100,000 and think they own the world, right? They, they get into, you know, they, they topple, they, they'll go a little bit over six figures, and they're like, that's right, you know? <laughs> and this guy, <laughs> you know, so the, just the humility sh just shattered me, like, how in the world can this be? And I was reminded, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا It's number one. They learn to walk on the earth with humility. Humility is also not just a demonstration of financial strength, it's also a demonstration, an undue demonstration of physical strength and intimidation. It can also be a demonstration of your ability to out-talk someone. Maybe you're a very aggressive, outgoing person, you like to make a lot of jokes, you can really just put somebody in their place, especially in a public setting. You need to chill out and kind of hold back from that, don't do that, because that's an expression of arrogance then, because you, you are overpowering someone with your tongue. You can overpower someone and put someone in their place with your, with your mouth. You, can, you, know, you know something about a, a, a field, an area, and you just want to stump somebody with your knowledge. Don't do that. Every, you know, it's good for you that you know, but you don't have to like, prove yourself at every juncture. You know? You know, for example, a teacher. A teacher's job is not to prove to his students that he knows. A teacher's job is to try to teach. You know? And you, you don't have to go and tell everybody your credentials all the time. You don't have to do that. You just be yourself. Just be yourself and be, be humble before people. As a matter of fact, try to hide your capability in some cases if it, if it means it'll just be a source of intimidation for others, you know? So now, this is hawnan. But then there's the other part of it, which is, I love this part. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Every word deserves a little bit of attention here, at least in this short clip. So I'll give each word its due. إِذَا inshallah. إِذَا is when, not if. Which means the situation that's about to be described is inevitable. It will happen, you will run into the situation. So what is that situation? al jahilun. People that don't control their emotions, people that are you know, obnoxious, people that are outrageous in the things they say or in the way they act. When those kinds of people address you, and it will happen. You will have to deal with difficult people in life, it will be a fact of life. There's no way around it. إِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ jahilun. Now the other thing is, you didn't go seeking their connection or talking to them, they came and addressed you. So they're the subject of the verb, suggesting that you're not even looking for trouble, trouble came to you, and it will. So just because you're not looking for it, doesn't mean it won't come. إِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا 
when the when the arrogant or not the arrogant the ignorant the the uncontrolled uh, address them the uncivilized even address them they say now two, there are two translations possible here qalu salaman means they say peace in other words it could be understood as they say peace out look you know maybe this is not a good time we should talk another time or whatever they get, they walk themselves out of the conversation they don't hear something stupid and say you know how stupid you are let me put you in your place no 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 peace they don't they don't engage when they hear something ridiculous they don't engage they just say peace qalu salaman nowadays it's not just about you talking to somebody in a conversation but this could even be a WhatsApp group, man. This could be like a Facebook post. This could be a YouTube video made about you or something. Or some trolling comments underneath. You don't have to address any of this. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Salaman. And especially in, pub in private settings where you're actually interpersonally exchanging you know, conversation with someone and they get out of line, you should just back off. Sometimes this might happen in the masjid. You guys are going to the masjid. Some elderly fellow might get a little ab aggressive with you. You don't know how to pray. Why are you standing like that? Astaghfirullah, you're wearing a t-shirt or something. They'll just go at you like that. And you're like, watch it, old man. Or whatever, I don't need this. And you walk away. No, 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 no. Just say peace, make dua for the uncle, let him keep yelling, and just go somewhere else and pray. Just go in another corner and pray. That's it. Leave it alone. Don't let it get to you. The other meaning of qalu salaman is they speak peacefully. So salaman could be considered a hal, what you call in English an adverb. And the way you would think of that is, so they're, they're talking to you aggressively, angrily, in a very arrogant tone, in a very offensive tone, almost in a way that they're trying to probe and get a reaction out of you. But you are speaking peacefully. You don't let them get under your skin. You learn how to control your emotions in this conversation. And it's not even a, you know, sort of, you have to go out of your way to kind of, mm, holding back, it's so hard to hold back. No, no, no. You, can, you develop a kind of tolerance where you can just let this stuff roll off the top of your skin, you don't let it get underneath, you don't let it get to you, and you just deal with it in a very reasonable, rational way. This is actually da'wah in and of itself. And Allah says Allah loves these people. Allah will describe later on these are the, the, you know, other qualities of believers, like they pray all night, qiyamul layl, tahajjud prayer. He'll give other descriptions of them, but the first description He gave of them is they are, they are you know, number one, uh, humble. They don't put others down, and when others are putting them down, they deal with it in a peaceful fashion. Or if they don't know how to deal with it, they just say peace and they walk away. May Allah give us the strength of character and really the common sense and the wisdom to act on this ayah when the situation arises. These ayat, the recitation of them is easy, talking about them in a video is easy, listening to it is easy. But when the situation happens in your family, when the situation happens among your friends, when the situation happens at the masjid or in the college, then living on this ayah, that's a diff different story altogether. May Allah give us the wisdom and the sense, uh, you know, to be able to act on this ayah when the situation arises. Barakallahu li wa lakum, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.